Hello everybody, how y'all doing? My name is Rafael and thank you very much for watching today's video and today I have a backfire build which is a full tank build <laughs> with 2 million armor so let me actually uh, explain to you what I wanted to achieve with this build then I will go through what playstyle you actually need to adapt in order to make this build useful otherwise it will be one of the worst builds you have ever used in your entire life and then we'll go over the pieces, right? So first of all, what I wanted to achieve was that because I really enjoy playing with a backfire, but the the talent that it has, right? The bleeding that uh, that we deal to our own selves, it's pretty strong, especially after the 100 stacks. So for example, at 200 stacks, when you reach 200 stacks, you will bleed in 10 seconds for 100% of your armor, right? On 100 stacks, you will bleed on 10 in, in 10 seconds for 50% of your armor. So if you combine that with the fact that you will probably getting shot from enemies, you're gonna die pretty fast, right? So I tried to use, I tried to use it with a few armor on kills, uh, builds, but uh, the issue there was that until I actually got that kill, uh, I was getting so much damage to myself that uh, a lot of times I would die and it wasn't really enjoyable. When it worked, when there were red and purple enemies that were just shotgunners, even uh, elites that I could just take down very fast, the build was insanely good. But because of sometimes they would come out tanks or they would be in a longer range or whatever and I wasn't able to take any kills, uh, the bleeding Plus, the damage that I would get from the enemy NPCs would be so strong that I would actually die, and I wasn't enjoying it. So I was like, you know what, we need to try something different. So I decided to go with something that gives me a bunch of armor, and we're also using a shield, a shield that is actually useful, right? So of course, the foundry bulwark was the, the gear piece that I said to go with. Uh, we have four pieces of um, foundry bulwark, as you can see, and the main reason for that is that pretty much uh, gives us a 10% total armor, gives us sealed health, and it also gives us uh, sealed and armor repair uh, after we take damage. 20% of what we take as damage is going to be repaired to us both on our shield and on our souls uh, over 15 seconds. So that was it. I look at it and I was like, you know what, that might work. And with a shield like this one that I have over here with like 5.5 million health, uh, it, it, it's pretty good. The cooldown on it, on it, it's also pretty decent. 18 seconds, I can survive for 80 seconds if something, if something goes wrong and my shield breaks. But, the, but at the end of the day, we want to have our shields up the entire time. So, uh, the playstyle. The playstyle, oh, sorry, I forgot to talk about Momento. Momento here, of course, gives us another huge boost because of this over here. The, the, this over here scales with how many um, core, bl co blue or red core attributes we have. So over here, for example, we get 10% bonus armor for every blue core attribute. I have six of those, which means that I would get a 60% bonus armor every time I pick up a trophy. 60% bonus armor of 2 million, as you can understand, is a pretty huge number. And as you will see in the gameplay that I have in the background, you will see at some point, maybe I reach even like 6-7 million health. I don't know, I, I can calculate it, but the, the, my armor bar is just so huge, right? So it's pretty good because it boosts our overall armor and at the same time it pretty much cancels the bleed because when you have bonus armor, the bleed is gonna take effect on that bonus armor, not your not your, your armor, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? You will lose your bonus armor, not your normal armor. So it's, it, it's good to pretty much make sure that our armor will, will stay intact for when we actually run out of our shield or when we get shot from behind so we have a lot of armor to stay alive because that was pretty much the idea no matter if you have 2 million armor or if you have 500k armor the blade will not change the blade is uh, a percentage of your total armor so as you can see it's just a percentage it doesn't matter in 10 seconds when you have 200 stacks you will lose your entire armor if you don't get, do something about it right so, the playstyle. Uh, the playstyle needs to be very careful. Um, if you're impatient, if you want to rush or whatever, you might fail a lot with this build. I failed sometimes until I figure out how to play. What you want to do pretty much is make... You want to start slow until you actually get some trophies, some momento trophies. And then you want to start like pushing a little bit harder. What I mean by that is that when you pick up trophies, you get a bunch of armor boosts and damage boost so it's pretty good for you to like 
uh, because it gives you a sense of safety so to say you can be uh, more aggressive and you will not get punished from it you want to have your shields up the entire time and you want to make sure that if something goes wrong and your shield is down you just take cover you, you wait you don't reload because if you reload you just change to your secondary because if you reload and you start bleeding and you have let's say 180 stacks or something and you get shot twice from an enemy then you're pretty much dead in 10 seconds uh, so I would highly suggest you to be very very careful when you're using this build and your uh, your shield is on a cooldown uh, Something also that is very important and I don't know if it's a bug or if, if how the backfire is it tend, is intended to work But when you reach 200 stacks right the, the maximum of your critical hit damage of the of your critical hit hit stats uh, stacks um, You bleed only once so you reach 200 stacks, you reload, you bleed for 10 seconds, then you keep your 200 stacks up, you reload again and you don't bleed. Now I don't know if that if that's how it is intended to work or, or if this is a bug or something, but uh, I figured it out while I was playing because I realized after some time that you know what I'm not bleeding at all, what, what's going on here? And I figured out that when you reach 200 stacks you don't bleed anymore. Uh, I have been I have been away from the game for a long time, so I don't know. I guess someone has already addressed it and told us if it works as intended or if it's a bug. But at the moment, it's something that works pretty good for me, so no complaints there. So as I told you, you need to be careful when you don't have your shield up. Or your your shield up, and when you have your shield up, you as you can see in the gameplay, you can be very confident because even though you have two million armor and your damage here seems to be at 80.8k which is very low if we go to our stats we see here that we have a 50% critical hit chance and 107% critical hit damage that will get up to 307% critical hit damage and you will be able to hit enemies even for up to like I don't know uh, 450k 500k somewhere around there uh, now let's go over the pieces because it's already like eight minutes in the video, Jesus. So the backfire, of course, as I told you, uh, not the best rolls here, but uh, I don't have enough exotics to actually re-roll it yet, so we will have to do something about about that later. But here is a the, the talent that I talked about: dealing damage to enemies adds a stack of one percent critical hit damage up to two hundred stacks, lasting ten seconds. On reload, apply a ten second bleed to yourself, to yourself, which deals zero point five percent armor damage per stack. Uh, we have four foundry pieces as I told you for the 10% of the armor, the armor shield, the shield health, excuse me, and the armor regen and the makeshift repairs. And I tried to roll on all of those uh, foundry bulwarks, of course, armor and critical hit damage or critical hit sands. As you can see here, armor, critical hit damage some more armor and some more critical hit damage. As you can see, this is not even like the max armor that I could get. I think I can reach 2.1 or 2.2 million. Not sure about that. Uh, moving on, we go to the Gila Guard. I decided to go with the Gila Guard because it gives us the 5% total armor, which is a nice uh, a little boost, but also because I have obliterate on it, right? Uh, my, my core attribute is armor, of course, and my, then my attributes are critical hit damage, explosive resistance, and critical hit sands. Obliterate. Critical hits increase total weapon damage by 1% for 5 seconds. Stacks up to 25 times. Now, I wasn't sure if I should go with Obliterate or if I should go with Intimidate. I, I tried both of them. As you can see here, I have actually re-rolled this one to armor as well. And after I played with the Intimidate for quite some time, I realized that even though the boost that we get from Intimidate, when we actually get it, is much bigger, it's like 10% bigger, uh, I decided to go with Obliterate anyways, for the very simple reason that Obliterate will be up, will be procced and at max stacks pretty much for the entire fight. When Intimidate, on the other hand, we will only be able to proc it when we get a trophy from, from our Memento backpack and also it will be uh, proc'd only for enemies within 10 meters of us. So in case somebody is like 15 meters, it will not be proc'd on him and we will not deal any extra damage on him. So I decided that um, Obliterate would be better for the entire fight, you know? And last but not least, of course, is the Memento Backpack. As you can see here, I have a critical hit damage attribute. 
Enemies you kill drop a trophy on death. Collecting trophies provides both a short and long term buff, the first of which scales with a number of core attributes equipped and lasts 10 seconds. For every trophy collected gain an additional 1% weapon damage, 1% skill efficiency and 0.1% armor regeneration for 300 seconds. Maximum stacks is 30. So from this over here we can actually get an extra 30% weapon damage and what is and a three percent armor regeneration uh i don't ha i don't think that i have any clips that i saw my armor regeneration but it's actually pretty decent as well so yeah pretty much that's it um you basically need to have in order to make this work it's like one of the very few builds on my channel that you cannot make the same build without having for example the momentum backpack if you take that out then the whole build is off the table you cannot get the same results or of course if you don't have the backfire you know the build is revolving around these two and the foundry bulwark i think is also a must have uh the four pieces of it i don't have the backpack and the chest of course because i haven't done the raids yet but also if i had done them and if i had the the the, the pieces i wouldn't change them for the moment or no way in hell i would do that but anyways guys it's already 12 minutes in the video i hope that you liked it and that you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to drop a like and to subscribe for more and let me know your thoughts on the build have a wonderful day bye bye